Hey everybody and welcome to Premiere Gal. Today is a Friday FX tutorial and I'm going to teach you how to turn an average stock video shot into a cinematic shot in Premiere Pro. And my goal here is for you to leave feeling like you don't need to purchase a high-end camera to achieve cinematic looks in your edit, okay? So this is the before and after that you see here. I'm gonna show you how to create this after right now. Here I have a demo sequence here. This is the original clip. It's a stock video clip of a gorilla that I got from Pond5 and it's in a 4K resolution. And just by looking at this, you can automatically see that it's not the best shot. We really wanna focus on the gorilla's face and that character. We don't really wanna see, this grass here isn't doing much for us. And also everything is in focus. There's not really any depth of field here. So we want to change that. And of course, add a nice film color grade as well. And lastly, I'll show you how to add a lens flare and even some rain effects if you want from Production Crate, which we will cover at the end. So first let's scale it up and reframe it. Because it's a 4K shot, we can scale it up more. So we can use the scale controls over here to scale the clip in like so. Now, if you had a 1080p clip, you probably wouldn't be able to scale up this much without losing resolution. So if you're going to do this, I'd highly recommend shooting in 4K or getting stock video that's in 4K and it's everywhere now. Even some free clips from pixabay.com is in 4K. So what I wanna do is show you guys the rule of thirds to show you how to align clips better. I actually have a motion graphics template that's free from my website it's called the rule of thirds grid. And you can drag and drop it on top of your clip so you can see you know, where you're positioning your subject. Ideally with the rule of thirds, you want to place the subject where these lines are intersecting. And right now it's, it's pretty good. We could even move this clip over a little bit more if we wanted it to be more in the rule of thirds section. So let's go ahead and do that. And if you want to download this, just go to my website and click on templates, premiergal.com slash templates and you can find this free rule of thirds Premiere Pro overlay that you can import into your essential graphics panel. So now that we have it in place, let's go ahead and delete that graphic. And now let's work on fixing this image, color correcting it and adding a film grade. So we're going to use Lumetri scopes to read the image. And I have a full tutorial on how to read the Lumetri scopes because they are intimidating at first. So you should watch that. I will link to it in a card up here and we're going to use the Lumetri color panel too. If you do not have this open, go up to window and go to Lumetri color. I think what I want most is to add some more contrast. So I'm just going to increase the contrast here and let's go ahead and reduce some of the highlights where it's kind of bright on his back and in the grass area. And let's also add a film look. I really like the Fuji Real A 500D Kodak look, and this comes with Premiere Pro, by the way. So if you click on that, you can see automatically it's much more contrast. It looks a little bit more cinematic, but it's a bit too much. So I'm actually going to reduce the intensity of it just a tad by using the slider here. And then of course you can make it more of a faded look if you want to. I kind of like the faded look in this case. Some people really do not like faded film looks, but I'll just increase it a bit. I will also add some vibrancy, which will just saturate the areas of the image that are not saturated more than they were. If you use saturation, it saturates everything and it's just too much, right? So, so this is why I never use saturation. I always use vibrancy. So now it's looking a little bit better, but I want to bring out some of the orange in his hair up at the top and on his side. I'm I'm a huge fan of the orange and teal look. So I like to use the curves here. He used saturation curves to basically click here on the wheel and bring out some of that red and orange. See what just happened there? You can play around with it until it's just right, but if I click this on and off, you can see that it just added a hint more of orange there. And because the opposite of orange is blue, and that's the orange and teal look, right? So I'm gonna boost in some of the blues here a little bit more as well 
Even though there's not a lot of blue in the shot, it's just nice to add to give it more of an orange and teal look. It's looking pretty good, contrast is better, but what we need to do now is make the background out of focus, right? And the focus on his face. So we want to mimic an aperture of a lens, let's say at a 1.8 or 2.8, which makes the background appear to be out of focus and the focus on the subject. So to do that, first we need to duplicate the clip in the timeline. And I'm going to delink the audio from the video by hitting Command L and then deleting the audio. Then I'm going to click Alt Option on my keyboard and click and drag to duplicate the clip on Video Layer 2. Now let's turn off Video Layer 2 for now and let's search for a blur to apply to Video Layer 1. So here under Effects, I'm going to search for a blur called Gaussian Blur. And I'm going to drag and drop that onto Video Layer 1. And nothing happens because we have to go back here and increase the blurriness. Let's increase it to about 20. And now you can see that everything is out of focus. So what we have to do now is add a mask around the face and chest area here on Video Layer 2. So let's turn that back on and let's use the opacity controls to use the pen tool to draw a mask. If you click and hold, you can make a curved point, which is ideal because it's less hard. And here is the background. So we want that to be out of focus. So I'm going to avoid that as much as I can. Like so. And you can get the hang of masking real quick once you practice. All right, so now you can see immediately after I let go there and closed off the mask, now his face, right? If I click down here in the timeline is in focus and the rest is blurry, but you can see this harsh line. We do not want this harsh line there. It just looks bad. So we need to feather it to blend in with the background. So let's go back over here to the mask and let's just feather it out. Let's increase this feather up and see how it looks now. It's looking better. Let's add a little bit more here and that's looking pretty good. So now you can see the before, if I open up the original video clip, if I double click and open it up in the source panel, you can see it just looks so much better now. I mean, the grade is better. The focus is on the gorilla, but to give it even more of a wow factor, you can use some overlays from Production Crate. Uh, I use Production Crate all the time. They have awesome resources. If you go to productioncrate.com, you can search for lens flares and you can download free ones without the stars. But if you want to get a pro membership, which is just $49 per year, you can download unlimited assets for the entire year. So it could be lens flares. Um, they also have like sound effects, music, and visual effects and motion graphics. And I also downloaded some light rain. I'll show you what I downloaded here because I wanted to see if I could add some rain to this shot. So if you click on this, you can see that there's some rain here. So I wanted to see if I could create sort of a rainy scene with a lens flare. So I downloaded these assets just by clicking this button and I dragged it into a bin here that I created called Production Create Lens Flares. And here I have the lens flare and the light rain. So first let's add the lens flare. Let's drag and drop it on the clip here and let's reduce the clip to be flushed with clips below. And you can see that it's not as big as 4K and that's no problem. Just right click, just right click and set to frame size to scale it up. And now we need to get rid of the black so we can see below. So go to effects controls and under opacity blend, it's like screen. And here we have this nice shot with the lens flare now, but it does look a bit artificial. So I want to tone it down. Let's make it around 30% opacity. So now we have this clip here with the lens flare and it's looking pretty good. The only thing I want to add is maybe some rain. So I'm going to drag and drop the rain on top and use the rate stretch tool by hitting R to slow down the rain and you can extend it to the length of the clip. So it just reduced the speed down to 91%, which is a pretty cool tool. The rate stretch tool is my favorite tool in Premiere Pro. And so now we have some light rain and a lens flare. Do you see that? Which is so awesome. And so we turned this flat shot here of this gorilla stock video from Pond5 
into a cinematic shot that would actually wow the viewer. So that's it for this Friday FX tutorial. If you guys found this useful, be sure to give it a thumbs up and let me know what other effects you want to learn in a comment below. I'm doing Friday FX tutorials every Friday and it's all gonna be based around something visual, anything that you see on TV, anything that you want to learn, okay? So anyway, don't forget to check out Production Crate. They have some awesome effects. I use them a bunch in my tutorials, so I'm sure you'll see me using more effects in the future. So that's all, and I'll see you all very soon. Bye! <laughs>